Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshex mainframe channel. This is Moshex. Today we're going to be having some fun with ZVM. Some people have written to me, uh, they wanted to see some videos how to get Linux uh, to run on the ZVM and, uh, and so I thought I'll make a video of that. The reasons why you would want to have Linux on the mainframe are manifold. Uh, the reliability, the serviceability, the availability of the mainframe, especially when it comes with ZVM with single system image clustering as well as the amazing density you can get on a, on a system in, uh, on, uh, on a mainframe with hundreds of CPUs and uh, dozens uh, of terabytes of RAM. And if you cluster them together, you can have thousands of CPUs. It's, uh, it's just unparalleled. Uh, but I don't need to do marketing for, for IBM here. Um, all I want to do is just get this uh, stuff to run. So um, I have uh, access to this uh, mainframe here. And uh, usually when I do my videos, as you all know, I try things on the go while I make the video. I record as I go. I don't prepare things. But this time I had to because I needed to upload some um, um, disk uh, images. I needed to upload some uh, ISO, some ISOs uh, for the installation. So this was all uh, just so slow I couldn't get it done on a video. And uh, today I'm going to show what I had to prepare to get it to work. So uh, first things first, let's uh, log in. I have this second level virtual machine here. I'm going to be logging in. Uh, and, uh, and we're going to show what it needs, what kind of definitions you need to have a Linux guest. So let's do that. So um, after logging in, I'm going to be looking at the directory entry for Linux, I'm going to be running uh, Debian here. So I do. A, so I'm going to be looking uh, find Debian. So uh, here's the definition for uh, my Linux guest. It's very simple. I have here user Debian password Debian. Um, I should probably make this a little stronger password later on. I give it one gigabyte of RAM up to uh, the beginning. You can use up to two gigabytes of RAM. Uh, permissions BFG, four CPUs, machine ESA. Some people uh, have been asking um, if, if the Z architecture came after ESA, why don't we have a machine definition for Z architecture. And the reason is that it's it always stays machine ESA. Sometimes you can have machine type uh, saying what kind of machine type you want to emulate, especially when it comes to instruction set. But it's always ESA and because the operating systems they always boot in ESA first and then they probe if the machine has Z architecture capability, 64 bit capability, then it will switch to 64 uh, bit. So you always put in here ESA. Later on, um, then you want to give it a console. Now, this is one of those cases where you want to have a line console and not a full screen console uh, for obvious reasons, because when uh, Linux boots, it prints out single lines. And so the 3215 console is perfect. Uh, we want to be able to print. We want to be able to get some input um, into the Linux guest, even though, of course, it's the, the card reader is less important, but the card reader can be made to work on the Linux. And then in, in my case here, I have two um, disks, 3390s. Uh, call, one is called device 120, one is called device device 121, as well as the uh, network uh, device. In my, cal check, in my case here, I work with, um, with the OSA Express cards on this mainframe, so I, I dedicate those as well. Um, and so that's all there really is to it. It's very, very simple. Now, one thing I'm not going to go into today, which I could, but uh, it's just a too large a topic to handle in, uh, in, in the same video, would be the uh, configuring a switch, a virtual switch inside ZVM, and then have all the virtual machines use the, that switch or, or select virtual machines use that switch. So we're going to have to um, do without that today. Um, uh, suffice to say that there is a hardware device here called 0A00, which uh, Linux accesses it as its network device and will be connecting to the outside world and the outside world to that Linux image through this uh, device. So very simple. There's really nothing to it. I'll save and, and then I get out. Uh, 
now would be the right time to do a direct most people work with Duramaint I don't I really don't like it uh, but um, if you use Duramaint there's I'll take the directory entry for that and this is pretty much it now all we need to do is connect one more uh, terminal set Debian Debian So we're in here now as Debian, and now uh, it's a very simple IPL0120, the device that you saw in the directory entry here, and um, and this machine will start to come up. Um, and already it's it's up, as you see, this is quite fast. Now we could uh, we could message from the console with the guest by typing in CPVIV message if you wanted to choose, but it's uh, it, it starts to IPL on its own. So you can see here it's coming up beautifully. Um, so it's running. As so you can see, this is pure Linux. Nothing different from the Linux you run on your uh, laptop, except for stuff like that. Dasty. It sees the Dasty here, of course. This is up. So I don't know how busy this machine is. Um, sometimes it's faster, sometimes it's slower. I'm not the only one in this machine. So, okay, S390 login. So now I should be able um, to just say SSH root at rtp.com If I'm not mistaken, yes. Yes. So that's it. We're up. Um, I can do. Yeah, as you can see here, this proves that this is Linux running on uh, on the mainframe, and I could now. Um, just do a in load. I don't know how much. Yeah, it doesn't show anything. So it's virtual and virtual and virtual. But um, I don't know what else to show. I mean, it's always anticlimactic when you when you show Linux on the mainframe because it's just uh, it's it's just Linux running on the mainframe. Now, one problem I see here is we only have one CPU, and that is a little strange. Why do we only have one CPU? Um, it should be two. I even I even have Apache running here, so service Apache stop. Wrong command. Oh yeah. Oh, because it's service. I think Apache two stop. I don't know what it is. Um, something else. Yeah, that royally confused my Linux. So, um, free. Let's see how much memory it sees. It does see one gigabyte of memory. I would have to go and find out why it can only see one CPU. But it it does IPL. Uh, it does boot or IPL and. Uh, and uh, now route at default should be able now. Nope, something is very strong, very weird. I don't know what's going on. Ah, it is able to ping and uh, out on IPv4. So yeah, so everything seems to work. I could do an apt update. Uh, but things work. Uh, I have a GCC compiler here. Um, this is all normal stuff. Now I could go and start another 10 of those, or 20 or 40. And uh, and so the networking here is very, very simple. It's just, it, it just sees the uh, OSA 
device. We would now have to, the more advanced uh, stage would be to give it a V-switch, a virtual switch, and then uh, you don't, we don't need to dedicate um, OSA devices. It would just uh, see a virtual switch. And I would have to play with that because honestly, I haven't, uh, I haven't even tried it yet, but I kind of get the concept. It's not that hard. Uh, but um, but so far I just haven't done it. So uh, this is it. Um, there's nothing else to show, and uh, it's running just fine. Uh, I just did IPL it once before I made this video, and uh, then I went out for a couple of hours to have lunch and meet friends, and came back and you know, rock stable, obviously. Um, but uh, it works fine. Now, if you want to shut down. Obviously, the best place to shut down will be from inside the VM. So we do shutdown now minus H. And if we go look at the console here, yeah, it's already going down. So um, that that is it, really. Uh, oops, it's coming down. And will be done soon. Oh, maybe it is already done. Yeah. Uh, by the way, one of the things you want to do when you uh, log in before you IPL would be term break key PF12. If I do that, uh, we can actually try this again. Uh, let's let's try this again. So. Or you know what? Let me log out, and then let me log in again. So now, of course, uh, um, Debian is not running anymore. Before I IPL it, I would do terminal break key PF12, and this sets uh, function key 12, uh, the function keys above the keyboard, uh, so that I can press. P12, uh, function key 12, and it will switch in and out of uh, the guest so I can disconnect. Because as you know, uh, if I just, if I, if I want to close the terminal, if I just turn off the terminal here, it will actually kill the whole guest. So that's why you want to have a way to disconnect from the guest and then disconnect from the terminal. So later on, if you want to ha have access to the console, you would just log in again. So let's try this. Okay, so now I say IPL. Uh, what was it? A 0, 120. Obviously here this is all dead. I will have to SSH back in again. Uh, yeah, and it's now coming up. So while it starts to be boot, let's um, oh, IPL the guest. Let's wait while, while it starts. It's waiting 10 seconds. So now I press F12. I'll make it loud enough so you can hear it. Did you see that? I'm out. I mean, I'm back into C CP. Now I can do a disconnect. Don't do a log off. If you log off right now, you will kill the guest. You need to disconnect the terminal. Okay. And I can now log in again. And yes, as you can see, it continues. I'm back into the console. If I had done a disconnect, I would have uh, shut down the, if I would have done a log off, I would have shut down the guest. So the key here is to be very careful with consoles. You need to disconnect. You need to press disk or write uh, disconnect so that um, you can uh, you can keep the VM, the virtual machine running. And of course with consoles, you always have to be very, very careful. So that's it. So this is up again now. Obviously I lost, I lost that, uh, this SSH session. I just uh, can try this again, SSH root, and I know, I know that I'm going to get lots of comments. I shouldn't allow um, SSH root login. I know that, but this is just a test machine, so it doesn't matter. Uh, what was it again? Moshix at RTP IBM .com. Yep. Yes. Time should be yeah, a couple of minutes. That's it. So this all works fine. Uh, so what we've seen here in this video is that uh, how to configure a guest, a Linux guest, how to IPL it, how to set the break key in the terminal so you can switch in and out, like I'm doing right now. Um, 
and uh, and then also we saw how to uh, shut it down how to connect to it it's really very very simple there's nothing special to it every child can do it if you have any questions please uh, post some comments in the description below this video in the comments below this video uh, please press on the thumbs up button if you like this video uh, some of the I've seen that recently the uh, thumbs up uh, have come down a little bit and uh, it is important for my channel to have as many thumbs up as possible please subscribe to the Moshix mainframe channel if you want to get notifications of future videos i'll be going out on a trip um, in the next 24 hours to out uh, to europe so it will take about 10 days before i come back with more videos but i already have some ideas thank you very much and goodbye